I now call to order the new Carlisle City so Council meeting, time. February 19th, 2019, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Pass if you don't mind staying for the stage tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this ability to meet here, Father, uh, and to establish our city and continue to drive the force of uh, fiscal responsibility and continue to serve the public's interests. Lord, protect our firefighters, our EMS, and our first responders. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. To the pledge of the tonight, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Action on the minutes. So moved. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. <clears throat> yes, sustain. Yeah. Sustain, yeah. Sustain them. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Fantastic. Uh, communications none tonight. Mr. Bridge? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. We'll start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Deborah Watson. Okay, as you have your report in front of you, the January total is actually the year to date total, obviously. Um, our revenue was $323,843.61, and our January total expenses was $292,837.13. And that's really it, unless you have any questions for me. Oh, no. Okay. Council, any questions? No? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kidko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off tonight with the service departments. Um, this is a repeat from the last one, but snow removal, we've been um, pretty diligent with that. We've had just some minor areas where we'd have to, or minor uh, events that we'd have to salt. Uh, street department currently has about two tons of coal patch. Last fall, we've been out trying to keep uh, the roads and potholes filled the best we can. Um, the best way to fill those is when it's dry. So if it, we end up getting a pothole that formed and it's raining for two days, we're not going to go out and uh, get that repaired. But as soon as it dries out, we'll do that. And we, at times, we'll get the air compressor out, blow that hole out, and at least get some coal patch in there. Um, if there are any uh, potholes, please uh, call the city building or notify us on um, any kind of the social media or let any one of the council members know. And they can definitely pass it on to Mr. Bridge if uh, that would work for them. 2018, 19 various road projects, Gilwood Drive reconstruction project. 300 block of Gilwood Drive will be reconstructed this year. Uh, the engineer is finalizing the plans. Uh, him and myself met today, did a final walkthrough. So here soon we will get those final, get those to the county for bidding, <coughs> and hopefully get uh, an, a good bid for getting this project in. Um, this will be sometime through the summer. 2019 wastewater influent building upgrade. We had our kickoff meeting 12-12. We had met with engineers in the past. Um, all and again, I'd like to thank council for that emergency ordinance that passed. We did order that one influent pump. Hopefully this week I get a call to get an update on um, where on the assembly line that pump is, and they will keep us up to date um, on pond shipping and air freighting it to us. The, the expected arrival was 12 weeks, but they're hoping they can get it to us within eight from the date of order. And I ordered it that next morning after council's approval. And uh, traffic signal upgrade project, we have completed the right-of-way phase, um, and it was just after the report was given to Mr. Bridge. So right-of-way is complete. They will start working on final tracings of the plans, which I think is due June. And then uh, they will probably, I think, put it out for bid this fall for, I think, spring of 2020's uh, uh, construction. So it's coming up on us fast where we thought this was four years ago when we just started this. So, but that is all I have on this report. I can answer any questions on that or anything else going on with the city. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Mr. Kiko, how much ballpark, have, how much uh, salt have we used so far this winter? This um, we have went through 100 tons uh, so far, and I uh, just saw a requisition to purchase another 100 
um, on my desk. So I'm guessing we're getting close. So we're probably about 125 to 150 so far. Is that kind of in range with what we usually do? Yeah, we're about 150 on average for a year. I think a couple years ago we went through 300. Um, we bid 300 every year. Rarely do we hit that number, but you know when we get the heavy, uh, not heavy snows, but the multiple little uh, dustings or stuff, that's where we really use it up. But no, it's, it's normal about 150. Okay. Also on the road repair and on on top of uh, Gale Wood, is there anything else that's going to be looked at to be a mill and fill or anything like that this year? It it, it's um, we're trying to finalize. Uh, we finalized our share for Galewood, and then um, we are possibly looking, depending on a few other factors on what we might have to repair from this winter, it would be to go ahead and finish Hemlock, Bittersweet, and I think Butternut to, that would finish off that section. It's I think all of them will be able to fit this year if the numbers all work out. Yeah, if all the numbers work out. Okay. Hopefully next year is going to be the next would be the start of getting into another big year. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Council, any questions? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Kicko. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kicko. Moving on with the city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trust. <coughs> Mayor, council, and citizens. In the month of January, the Nuclear Fire Division responded to 71 EMS calls in the city, eight EMS runs in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to two fire-related runs and one in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had two EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike or Bethel Clark due to 52 being on response. We answered two mutual aid runs for Pike Township and we answered one for Bethel Clark. In the month of January, the division responded to two overdose calls. <coughs> um, on the 28th of the month, we had our ISO inspection and everything that from the inspection that we can see right now looked very good. Uh, we won't have our results probably for three to four months, possibly sooner. But from what we could see and from what the inspector told us, it, everything looked very well, very good. Uh, it's the first time we've had an ISO inspection in a little over 10 years. <laughs> How long are they required? It's when they want to call you. Okay. <laughs> I was like, man. I got a phone, I got a phone call like on the 2nd or 3rd of February and he said, um, we haven't seen you in a while, uh, we need to make a date. And I said, is this uh, just a meet and greet? He goes, nope, this is your ISO inspection. So, <laughs> they give us about two to three weeks to prepare for it. And <clears throat> oh, wow. Down for any questions, Chief? No, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to the City Manager Report, our police discussion with our uh, Sergeant, with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, City Manager, Mayor, Council, and audience. In January, new nuclear deputies were dispatched to 44 calls. Assaults, we had none. Domestic violence, there was 10. Theft, there was five. Non-injury crashes, we had six. Injury crash, none. Citation, 17. Drug complaint, zero. Overdose, zero. Suicide attempted, we had one. And burglary, we had zero. In January, new cloud deputies have been to the laundromat on several trespassing calls. We believe subjects are going in and staying because of the cold temperatures we've had. If you're not doing business in the laundromat and you're inside, that is trespassing. Deputies are having a problem with certain, a certain male and female that have been acting suspicious around the city. Deputy have had reports via the, the Facebook that they're, that these two well, I could read it here. <laughs> These two are involved in criminal activity, including attempted burglary. Uh, we cannot arrest them for just being suspicious. We need a complaint. We have received no complaints on these two, and they've been running around since midsummer. Uh, so the numbers at the bottom of the page, if, if you see an issue, please call us. And Sheriff Burgess has received another free prescription uh, drug drop box for unwanted and unused medications. The sheriff has placed a new drug box in the lobby of the Clark County Sheriff's Office. This box will be available to anyone to drop off medication 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Department at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to solve the crime. And with that, I'm open for questions. Council? I have a question for you, Sergeant. Yes, sir. How many drug boxes are in the county, and where are they all located? Do you know? 
Um, off the top of my head, I believe we have four. Uh, we have one at the fire department here in New Carlisle. We have one that we just put in the uh, uh, sheriff's office. City Springfield Police has one next door. Uh, there's one at the East District office on across from <coughs> Cinema 10 on the east end of town. Yeah. So yeah. I believe that's it for right now. Okay, I'm just wondering. Thank you. Sure. Of course. Oh, Mr. Lindsay. Sir, Joe, when you uh, dispose of these drugs, when the citizens dispose of them, how are they supposed to do that? Do they just throw the entire bottle in there? Does it go in a bag and dump it in there? You just dump the meds in there? How, how uh, what's the process to get well, it? It's up to the individual. If you want to take the pills out of the bottle, and we really prefer just pills. We, we're not supposed to take any liquids or salves, uh, anything like that. Uh, we've had some pretty disgusting stuff dumped in there. <laughs> Uh, the guy that cleans it out is our evidence tech. He's, uh, he knows what he's looking for and he's very careful. Uh, we've had, and we don't want needles by any means. But the correct thing to do is, is just put them in a bag. You can come in and, and drop them off in the container or out, out of the container. And both are destroyed by us. Um, that's it. It's pretty easy. Just walk in the door, dump them, and leave. Okay. Thank you. Council, anything else? Thank you, Sergeant. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on with the city manager report <coughs> under informational items, Madison Street School pre-demolition asbestos survey. Um, all those additional samples that we had uh, tested did come back. Every one of them came back at less, one, less than 1% asbestos. What that means for us is very good news. Um, so uh, that heavily reduces the amount that we have, would have to pay to remove that asbestos. So I did get a quote uh, today. I did supply that with council. Um, so the quote to remove the asbestos that is over at the Madison Street School is $38,860. And again, that is just a quote. We don't have to move forward with that. Um, but it is a good um, indicator that we needed to know what exactly was in that school. So we have the asbestos surveys done that was emailed to council. So we know exactly where it is. We know what quantities it is. Now we know we have a complete up-to-date picture of how much it's going to cost to remove that asbestos to make that school just a little bit more marketable. Um, ultimately, that would be council's decision, how they see fit uh, to move forward. So I'm sure we'll be having some discussion on that in the weeks to come. Um, 2019 operating budget timeline. I know I went over this last meeting. I'd just like to reiterate. Um, we have our last special meeting tomorrow at 2.20 um, at 7 o'clock here, uh, here at the Shelter House. After that meeting, I will need to put an ad in the Miami Valley Sunday News. That needs to run for uh, at least two weeks, I do believe. And it's going to have a summary of our budget on there, and that is a charter requirement. And then we will have a special meeting on 311 for the purpose of having our town hall and to approve the 2019 operating budget. 2016-2017 Prentice Drive Reconstruction Project. I brought that up to council and to <coughs> the audience. Um, a couple weeks ago, that's one the instance where they um, had miscalculated the formula, and we got a letter that said we owed um, the remaining twenty-four thousand uh, dollars. Me and Mr. Kiko did meet with the county representatives on Thursday, February seventh. Um, so I would like to supply just a small update on that. Um, the county is very apologetic for what had happened. Um, <coughs> I also had learned that we were not the only entity that this happened to. That this was uh, one of the first years they used the formula funds and that uh, they were not clear on those instructions. Mr. Kiko, please fill in to uh, help out and fill out gaps if, we, if, I, if I miss any. But since it was a, a new uh, concept to use that, uh, not, again, not only us was miscalculated, but all the, all, also other jurisdiction as well. Unfortunately, we are still on the hook for that balance. Um, we do have about $21,000 in our existing budget from a block grant project. Um, uh, the county agreed that would be a great use of those funds. So I did update the budget. We'll discuss that tomorrow to expend those 21, that 21,000 to this. Uh, we will have to come up with a difference around two or three thousand uh, dollars, more than likely probably out of the general fund, because what we have in the block grant line item is not enough to cover the whole past amount. Um, we are under no time frame to pay that. Uh, the county did pay it on our behalf, and we will just repay the county. So we are not within 30 days have to pay that. Am I missing anything? Uh, just real quick, uh, formula is what we've been getting for years and years and years um, from the county. This was critical infrastructure, uh, CI for short, and so it was administered identical to formula. Uh, the way you would uh, administer it time-wise, uh, percentage-wise, everything, 
There just happened to be a little bit of fine print that your, your share is a percentage. So if the project as a whole percentage goes down, then yours will go down. They allowed us to reduce all of our share down where it shouldn't have been below the percentage. So that's where kind of that mistake fell come in. So that's an update on that. So we will have to pay the, the balance off. Um, <coughs> CCA phone meeting, I brought up concerns um, regarding the fees per collection, how much we actually pay them to collect, rather a lack of Spanish forms, um, and cross-referencing to the federal database. We had a great phone conversation on that. Um, I do need to schedule up a follow-up meeting with those. They do have some findings to report back to us. So as soon as that information is given to me, I will update council as I uh, get the information. Please excuse the upcoming town hall. That should have not been on there. We have already done that. And the last item on the city manager report. We have had multiple budget work <coughs> sessions, and this is the second year in a row that I just want to extend a sincere thank you to our council for having such productive and positive budget work sessions. So hats off to you guys um, for making it very easy. It's a very stressful time on this side. I'm sure it's equally stressful on your side as well. But when we work together like that, we accomplish great things. So for that, we thank you. And that is all I have for the safety manager report. I would be happy to entertain any questions. Council? Mr. Cobb. Mr. Bird, let me ask you a question on sure. Madison Street School. Okay. If we did spend the 38000 to remove the asbestos, what would we do with the building? The building's still there. That's just remove, is to remove the asbestos. How you guys see fit with after that is up to you guys. But it would make it a lot more marketable for someone to come in and maybe tear it down but it doesn't solve the problem that the school's still there. Well, there is a, another option to bring that down. And what's that? Is get the apprenticeship program out of the operating engineers. If they want to tackle such big project and they have the liability insurance to cover them and we have the asbestos out, if that's the way we council decides to move forward, I think it's a great idea. Well, they'll tear it down. You've got to get the trucks in here to haul it away. Well, that's additional cost. So. That's something council would have to get together as a group and decide how you guys want to move forward after the, you don't have to remove the asbestos, it's just a quote to do so. Yeah. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, is there any interest in that building? I know in the past there has been, but- It comes nothing, and goes. It, nothing it, came it, of it? It comes and goes. As soon as like we put an article in a paper about it, we have a few phone calls on it. I think people, once they see it, or they learn a little bit more about the building, it, they lose interest. I don't know if it's because of the asbestos. I don't know if it's because of the cost. I don't know if it's because of the current state. Um, a lot of our interest comes from they want to rehab the building, and that's a very not cost-effective thing. I've had people want to turn it to apartments, offices. Um, yeah, I mean, so it comes. The interest really comes and goes. I'm not going to sit there and say like we get the asbestos removed. Of course, we can put an article in the paper about it. Hopefully, that'll <laughs> get some interest in it. I think the land bank is still a good option if we need to use that, um, if they're still interested in it. But I think the first step is to make it very attractive. The most attractive you can make it to someone, you know, and that is including get it that, getting that asbestos out. Is, is this all the asbestos that's in it? That has to come out. No, there's asbestos that has all to over. That has yeah, to come out. That's, just, I mean. that's just the stuff that needs to come out before you demo the building. All the, all the other stuff that tested lo less than 1% can stay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Council, anything else? No. Nope. Thank you, nope. Mr. Bridge. Sure. Comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Is it your name and address, please? Hearing none. May reports there are none tonight. Resolution, Mrs. Berner. Tonight we have one resolution, resolution 19-05R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution appointing the city manager as the designee for the city of New Carlisle's mandatory public records training as required by the Ohio Public Records Act. Council. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to approve resolution 19-05R. Second. Thank you, Mr. And an explanation of this resolution, um, every year uh, council is required to do what we call sunshine laws training in the state of Ohio. Um, there also is a clause in, Ohio, in the Ohio Rice Code that allows me to go on their behalf. So this is what this legislation does. It gives me permission to act on behalf of the six council members that are currently set. So Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I need about maybe 30 more seconds. Go ahead. Um, that does not mention the new council seat. 
Um, the new council seat um, would probably, I would recommend, maybe council would recommend them go to the council of Sunshine Laws training the first year on their own. If not, we can amend the current legislation piece we have, and then I can go on the newly elected person's behalf as well. Any point in time, any of you currently six want to go, opposed to letting me go on your behalf, please let me know, because we would have to amend the legislation at that point in time as well. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none. Mrs. Burr. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion accepted. Six. <coughs> Ordinances, there are none tonight. Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Executive session, uh, we will need a motion for that, and it's to discuss the employment and compensation of a public employee or employees and the purchase or sale of property. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to go into executive session. Second. Before we do that, Mr. Cook, I didn't see that you did that. Will you withdraw your motion, Mr. Lindsay, so we get to Mr. Cook? Yes, I would like to make a motion that uh, Council go ahead and authorize the Charter Review Committee. And based upon the fact that some people have said that we don't read the Charter, I'm sorry that we do, and we did not find any place in the Charter that would preclude us from authorizing a Charter Review Committee before the eight years that the Charter calls for. So therefore, I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Cup, second. Second. Council, any discussion on the motion? No. no? Mr. Oh, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, this is actually for Mr. Bridge. Uh, do you have any idea how much it costs to do this? Or is that is a strictly council thing. I have no idea. I have no idea. When's the last time? That's a valid cost, in. I'm assuming. Well, almost eight years ago. Well, the attorney has to look at it, too, I believe. Well, that's true. I don't remember much cost to it because it was council members and citizens uh, all having meetings and discussing what what would be good changes and not. I don't remember anything outside of that. There normally is no cost up until the Charter Review Committee sends their information to us for the ballot issue. At that point, I'm sure the yeah, law director will have to oversee this. And then we've got the cost of the election, now, which would be in 2020. So I would think our cost would be very minimal mm -hmm. on the election issue since it's going to be. Uh, so 2020, the primary? 2020. Council, any comments on it? Mr. Bridge, you have something? Yeah, I was going to say, she shouldn't cost that much until the final. I would assume how it works is you guys get your group together, you go through the charter, what changes you want to make, what, what you want to take out, what you're going to put to the submitters, and then she reviews it, make sure there's no conflicts against the existing charter or against state law and be done with it. Right. Yeah. The only other cost we may have would be notifying the citizens of the change. Now, whether we do that by Legal ad. the public media or we do it by mail out, however, that has to be decided. Okay. Um, also, in that legal opinion she wrote, she said there's nothing stopping you from doing it now, but you still have to do it at the eight-year mark. Correct. When is that? So if you get one now, when is the eight-year mark? Another two years, I think. 21. 21? 21. 2021. The last one was in 2013. So you're going to have one in 2020 and another one in 2021. The um, changes that were instituted in 2013 were not passed okay. by the electorate. Oh, gotcha. On the idea of it being in 2020, and then coming back and doing it in 2021. Yeah, well, again, I assumed that it would probably be like another eight years. But you said, but Lynette and her, I, I, I mean, I read it was yeah, a couple days ago, and I'm not trying to step on anyone's yeah. toes. But I thought she said you can go. There's nothing stopping you from doing it now. But however, you still have to go that eight year from as the charter states. Yeah. So eight year from the last one, you still have to hit that eight every eight years. But you can do as much as you want in between. Yeah. If you do it in 21, you're probably going to have to pay for the election. We pay for election in 21 anyways. Because I don't think there's an election scheduled in 21. You are, Mr. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mr. Cobb <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, that's our fault. You are. <laughs> so, Council, any other feelings on it? So, then we could wait till 21. Yeah. And it wouldn't change anything as far as cost because we're going to have to do it again. Regardless. 20 and then, like you said. No, 21. But again, if, if the Charter Review Committee says in 21 there are no changes, there would be none. But it'll still have to go on the ballot. No. No? Only if there's the only way it would go on the ballot would be if the Charter Review Committee sends to council changes and council would authorize them to go on the ballot. Okay. Council? Do you mind if we break rules of council? Go ahead. We have to, we have to vote for that so that the audience may speak on this topic. Is there a motion? Don't move. Is there a second? Second. Fantastic. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. <laughs> Noakowski. Oh, I saw raise your hand. Oh, okay. I didn't mean, yeah, sorry. Linda Linda Eggleston Noakowski, three seventeen South Main Street. I have I I'm not clear on something. If they have a charter review now and in the election it is changed the charter still reads seven years from the last charter revision so why does that mean that it's the next year because you because the charter said, all the same page you have to have it every when's the last one done 2013 13 13 so you're have you have to have another one in 2021 the charter says every eight years you shall have a council there's nothing saying you can't do it in between time but it's telling you you have to do it every, every eight years. If they wanted to do this now, they would could do their committee, put it on the ballot, but they still have to form a completely different committee, according to that legal opinion, a different committee, and a different thing every eight years. So that would be the 2021 one. Since they did it eight years prior, they have to follow that every eight years. But there's nothing saying they, can, they can't do it in between. I think in order to clarify this, I think what Linda is referring to, what if the Charter Review Committee, and it does pass on the ballot, that instead of every eight years, we go to five years? Then I think that would wipe out that 2021. I am not, a, I am not an attorney. <laughs> I have no idea. For that matter, you can just not change the language to say at least every year. <laughs> I think it would change that charter I, because you're, you're calling about you could, having one in 21 with the old charter the new charter amendment would say every five years so that would be from this year until would kick it up to 25. yeah it's my understanding that when we have a charter review just like in years past and you've been the chair of these you're, you're an expert in this uh yeah. is if the amendment changes like you take out the eight years and you put in eight more years or ten years and then the charter passes by the vote of the people. That is our new charter. The old charter no longer governs. It's the new charter that governs. But I mean, she is our legal counsel. And well, the question wasn't posed to her. If we go in and have a charter review commission now, and they change that eight-year requirement to five, that was never brought yeah, up. Yeah. To her. No, yeah, that wasn't. It wasn't. It is now. So that's so it is now. So it adds yeah. a whole another what? confusion. So the, the thing I, that I'm not clear on is why it's. What in that language sets it as a benchmark for when the charter was approved, if it's to have it That's every correct. eight years? You've got a new, I mean, you might not have changed that amendment, but you've changed the charter. And the charter is then a new charter no. And, and I see where you're coming from, Linda, but I believe that that section of the charter, unless it's changed, would still be in force. So it's saying every eight years since the charter. But eight, it doesn't say from when it started. 
That's the that's my point. It must be reviewed every Actually, eight does. years. It does. It says from that you list the day they first had them. It says I don't have it in front of me. It says and therefore after every eight years after. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm looking for it now. But there is a starting date. Okay. From start I, and then it says president from there. There on yes. Six. Do, 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 do. Mr. Lauer, you have something. I saw you. No, I'm good. Oh, oh okay. Oh, he's having an attack. No, we're good? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Miss Council, nothing else? Your budget? All right. Mrs. Berner, call the roll. What are we voting on? I don't think it's we're voting on. I was going to say, what are we voting his on? Chart, his motion for the charter motion. Okay, okay. You I get that. Enough, so. yeah. And you were the second. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. No. Mayor Reynolds. No. Mr. Shammy. I'm sorry. No. Mr. Lowry. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb. Yes. All right. That's a three three split. So. Now, Mr. Three. Lindsay, would you like to make your motion? <laughs> for the, Mr. Mayor, I move to go into executive session. <laughs> Second. Second. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion right. accepted. Six you now take a five minute recess. Council, do you have anything else before we go into our recess? How are you? Uh, <laughs> Dewey, nice to see you. Better late than never. <laughs> I don't think you heard it. I said, better late than never. I've been here three times. Seven. All right. We are now at our five-minute recess.